So, I have a, a slight confession to make. And this isn't easy for me to do. And I know that there's probably better ways to, to explain this to you guys and such. And I do appreciate the support for so long. But I did something really stupid. And I should probably come forward and explain it to you guys. And be very um, transparent about it. I played Skellige. And I somewhat enjoyed it slightly. Now, hold on. Um, let me explain. Basically, what happened was... We were taking some deck suggestions from some viewers, and this is essentially we got to a point where um, someone suggested a Skellige deck in the theme of old school Axemen, which is damage equals points, etc. And I enjoyed it. Now, you'll probably remember some instances where I may have been less than fair about the bullshittery that is Skellige. God, I hate Skellige. Have I ever told you that Skellige is the fucking worst thing in the world? So, here's the deck I used. Alright, so I'm going to just cruise through this real quick. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time on the actual deck. Uh, it's called Sh Flake's Shame, because it's kind of my little... Dirty little secret, I guess, is that I played this deck and and, and I somewhat enjoyed it. And uh, so, here we go. We'll just go right through it. Now, if you know anything about Old School Axeman, Old School Axeman is typically a long round weather-related... Um, sort of scratch at you very slowly um, deck that falls behind early and then generates a lot of points in the long run um, so here's we'll go through the deck and I will uh, explain to you the basic strategy of it I am by no means a Skellige expert and there's probably tons of improvements that you can make but that's on you all right so two times Tursic Skirmisher I have two times Trophy Catch Trophy Catch obviously is to be moving things into Weather Rose and making sure that you're maximizing the damage potential. Two times Heimei Scald. Now this is again, for thinning purposes, nobody thins like Skellige thins, it's kind of gross. But uh, the Heimei's with the Tursic Skirmishers is a standard uh, approach to Skellige Bronzes. Now the Dimmon Light Longship, a staple five provision card. I have two Disgraced Brawlers. This is a card that I'm kind of on the fence about, but seven uh, points of strength for five provision even if it takes four damage and kills itself not many cards are going to dish out four damage that easily so i got two of those i've got two primal savageries which is a great great card i have two times and great great sword now this is the old school axeman uh, where uh, up the opposing row on the opposite side of the of the board uh, any damage it takes will then become a point of strength for this so that is, I got two of those. I have one Ancrite Longship. This was just a throw in at six provision. This is very much not part of the strategy. It's just a good card to have. Um, great card to lead off with. Uh, I have one times Lacerate and one times Torrential Rain. Okay, now beyond that, I've got Avalok. I have Skellige Storm, and Skellige Storm is really important. Now, a lot of people, I don't want to say are sleeping on Skellige Storm because it's really a very niche, niche bronze card. Uh, Skellige Storm, where it does one damage to every unit on a row. Now, what this means is that you're going to want to pin cards to a certain row and then put this on the board for some pretty significant um, returns. And I'll explain to you how that happens. I've got Mork Varg, obviously, because something to discard out of your hand or out of the deck in order to uh, go ahead and get some tempo and some thinning. I have Dagger Two Blades. He's pretty much like an extra uh, greatsword, Ancrite greatsword, but he can be played. Uh, he takes the uh, the bonuses from any row. He plays on the melee, but any damage taken on any row is what you're getting. So this is a great, great card for that. And Burnabran, again, more uh, cycling, discarding, thinning, that kind of deal. I have Sveblod Totem. The Totem is pretty much, it's a pretty, it's it's a tempo play. It's a really, really good card uh, to throw on the board. Um, the damage that the Fanatics will take can is kind of negative value for your opponent. The damage that they're going to take is going to turn in, uh, turn them into uh, Bear Abominations, which are much better. Uh, finally, Land of a Thousand Fables to get pretty much your Ragnarok, to get your Skellige Storm, to get all that stuff out of the board, which is, of course... Ragnarug with is kind of a focal point. Now, there are the cards for it, and I'll explain to how this works. So in the early rounds, you're doing typical Skellige things. You're playing your Burnabran, you're dropping a bunch of cards, you're thinning, you're drawing, you're playing your Heimaze, you're getting rid of cards that you don't need for your win condition because of the fact that 
your win condition is going to reside on one great sword or one dagger uh two blades in order to really slam down the points um and really make it worthwhile so you're going to be playing your light ship everything can pretty much be played except for things like ragnarug and your um skellige storm can even be played basically what you want to do is make sure that your last set of plays has either a um a great sword or a dim uh, or a dagger on a row then you're gonna arnulf uh onto the opposing row take the damage and then hopefully the weather that's still there will continue to tick away the ideal way that this has worked in the past for me is you're going to be saving your uh your dagger two blades or your great sword and you're going to have Ragnarug likely on one row and on the other row with two cards left um you're you're going to drop your Skellige Storm to deal one damage and on, against everything on the next turn it's Dagger or Ancrite Arnolf onto the other row and then on the turn end on your opponent's last turn all that weather hits on all the uh, all the units that are there and your opponent is likely going to be stacking. He's either going to be stacking in Ragnarug or he's going to be stacking opposite Ragnarug. Nonetheless, you're going to have one beefy row that you're going to get some good Skellige Storm value. I've played this wherein I've been behind by 20 to 30 points and ended up winning ahead by 10 to 15 points because of that. Your opponent will likely suspect um, once you start dropping uh, certain cards early, you want to play this to keep it a mystery that you're not playing um a weather-based um, dagger type deck because then they're going to bleed you. The mistakes I've made with this deck was getting a little bit, uh, getting a little bit spooky with some of the cards like Ancrite Greatsword early, so uh, in round one to threaten a round to win, and then tipping my hand. Information with this deck is super important. Not many people will play Arnulf in this format in Greatsword style or old school Axeman style uh, format. They'll play it in. in, in you know, in other ways, in, in Bloodlust-related decks. But in this one, you really want to make sure that your Arnulf uh, or your deck idea or your deck strategy being um, Axeman style is going to pretty much be, you want to keep those cards close to your chest because as soon as you tip it, your opponent is going to push to, uh, push to, to bleed rounds and then you're kind of screwed. So long rounds are your friend. Don't be afraid to go down by 20 to 30 points uh, with a few cards left because you will get those back with the right sequencing of cards. Uh, I'm going to probably post some other uh, gameplay of this to sort of explain it nonetheless. Uh, here's the, the deck again. We'll go through it real quick. Two times Skirmisher, two times Trophy Catch, two times Heime Scal, uh, uh, two times Dimon Light Longship, two Disgraced Brawlers, two Primal Savagery, two Onkrite Greatswords, uh, an Onkrite Longship, Lacerate, Torrential Rain, Avalok, Skellige Storm, Morkvarg, Dagger Two Blades, Burnabran, the, uh, the Totem, and Land of a Thousand Fables, which sounds like uh, some type of emo band's debut album, and Ragnarug, all under the 16 provision umbrella of Arnulf the Patricide. So here is the deck. Uh, it's called Flake's Shame, and for good reason, I can't believe I made this deck. All right, so I never play Skellige, and I want to be completely uh, honest about that. And I'll even show you. As, as you can see right over here, here are my statistics of every faction I've ever played. Uh, Skellige is way behind uh, my monster's love. And as you can see, it's been Monsters, Scoia'tael, and only recently have I been playing Nilfgaard. But all these games that I played with uh, Skellige was way back in closed beta to early open beta when Axemen was a thing that we used to do. Nonetheless, these are games that uh, I kind of just threw out in the, in the rear view mirror. The new Skellige is not my thing, but I did find a love based on a deck submitted by one of my viewers, Emir, ironically, who gave me a list uh, that was very, very close to this. And then I made some adjustments to get a little bit more draw uh, reliability and some thinning into it. So thanks, Amir, for the for the idea and for making me play it. Uh, we do play my deck every Tuesday on my stream. Again, that stream is at twitch.tv slash watchflake, where you submit your deck lists. I play a couple games with them and uh, we go from there. Nonetheless, uh, Skellige was something that I'm not <laughs> not really... 
prone to playing or enjoying but i did like this because it did bring some memories back of old school axemen which i did used to like uh all righty on that note be kind to one another ladies and gentlemen if you like what you see drop some comments and i will be dropping a video with some gameplay of the deck uh, on a later day i will see you soon thank you so much catch me on twitter at watchflake on twitch twitch.tv watchflake i'm live monday to friday 10 a.m eastern standard time thank you so much adios